Saki Bhatti. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. When I became the Member of Parliament for Meriden three years ago to this day, I did so on the promise to do my utmost to protect our precious Greenbelt. It's a promise I take very seriously and it's ever more important with the integrity of the Greenbelt being constantly under threat by development. And in my constituency, I have the Meriden Gap. It's the green lung of the West Midlands and it's sandwiched between both Birmingham and Coventry. It's a vital migratory throughway for wildlife for the United Kingdom, so much so that losing this would be catastrophic for wildlife across the country. So I stand by my constituents who all understand that while we need more housing, they also recognise that we must do what we can to alleviate pressures on the Greenbelt. Too often I hear from constituents of their dismay around the planning process, and I am in no doubt that if we don't reform our planning system, we will disenfranchise whole communities and chip away at the very trust that people place in our democracy. And I'm pleased that we're here where we are today. Colleagues like my right honourable friend for Chipping Barnet uh, and the member, right honourable friend for Isle of Wight have campaigned for common sense reforms, and a government that has listened means that we can see light at the end of the tunnel. I am pleased that the government is focused on Brownfield first. It is a policy that I have championed for many, many years. And in the West Midlands, we have enough Brownfield to meet our housing needs. Similarly, the reforms around land banking are very important because too often my constituents are flabbergasted that more Greenbelt is being eaten up by development when we know developers have land banked for future developments. And I particularly wanted to address the issue of the planning inspectorate. And I welcome the MPPF consultation that was announced today. My borough council has put forward a local plan. It's been a really difficult pro process. My constituents have been asked to make a significant sacrifice uh, to meet the duty to cooperate. And when the local plan was reviewed by the inspectorate, one site in the plan, which would have had 2,000 homes, the inspector said, you can't do it, you need to do something around, uh, around 500 houses. And one site, which uh, would have had an uh, existing school m moved to a new building and uh, having that rebuilt, the inspector effectively said, you, do you can have the housing, but you don't need the new school. Clearly, that isn't OK, because if you're building homes, communities deserve the infrastructure to go with it. These interim findings were, not, were against the mood and desires of the community that I serve. And for me, the planning inspector is clearly not in, in touch with the people it is meant to serve. So I have a couple of questions for the Minister. Can the Minister confirm that while, with the duty to cooperate being removed, will the Solly Old Council be able to review the local plan again? And if they say they can build 2,000 homes on one site, will they, will they be allowed to do so? And when they say they need a new school, will they be allowed to do that? Um, just conscious of time, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is more than about planning. It is about the faith that our communities place in democracy. It is about their voice. It is about them knowing that when they express their will, it will be so.